If you've ever followed an American success story, then the story of the company Vans is just what you're looking for. This streetwear shoe and apparel manufacturer is now celebrating its years of popularity in supplying the most innovative and well-received sportswear on the market. Today, one will find Vans shoes and other products the favorite of sports celebrities, top musicians, and spotlighted persons all over the world. The creators have become legends in several areas, most notably the skateboarding industry and sport. In this video, we're going to show you 10 crazy things that you need to know about Vans. We're Only Brands, the channel dedicated to bringing you awesome, regular content on the world's hottest brands. Let's do this. Number 1. The Beginnings Brothers Paul Van Doren and James Van Doren, along with partners Gordon Lee and Sergei Delia, officially opened the Van Doren Rubber Company, now known as Vans, on March 16, 1966 at 704 East Broadway in Anaheim, California. Both Paul and James were born in Massachusetts where they worked for the Randolph Rubber Manufacturing Company, Paul for 20 years and James for 10. The first footwear manufacturer to produce a skateboarding sneaker was Randolph who debuted the Randy 720 in 1965. The Randy 720 was nearly identical to a Ked sneaker, except it featured a reinforced tough toe and heel made with Randy Preen rubber for additional traction since, at the time, skateboards lacked grip tape. The Randy 720 was also the official official sneaker of the National Skateboard Championship Incorporated and was worn by some of the competitors in the 1965 International Skateboard Championships in Anaheim, California. In 1964, Paul and James had moved to Garden Grove, California to run a Randolph rubber factory and in 1965, they left Randolph to found their namesake company. Unlike their previous employer, the brothers hoped to circumvent wholesale and cut out retailers entirely. Instead, they would sell footwear directly to the public in order to drastically increase profits. The same year, Paul, James, and their business partners built a manufacturing plant, which included a 400 square foot retail space featuring a sign that read House of Vans to sell their sneakers. On the company's first day of business in 1966, 12 customers showed up to choose from the three styles of sneakers, including the number 44 deck shoe, now known as the Authentic. When they first launched, the men's models sold for $4.49, while the women's sold for $2.29. As the brothers had only produced display models, when a purchase was made, the sneakers were manufactured the same day and available for pickup that evening. With little traffic and meager savings, Paul knew they couldn't afford to advertise for very long, and so he hoped to quickly attract customers with the company's thick-soled American-made sneakers. Number 2. First Shoes Vans shoes didn't have names, but they were identified by numbers. The most popular style on opening day was number 44, which today is known as the Authentic Shoe. This shoe, made of thick canvas and nylon thread, came in navy blue, white, green, and red. But years later, it was the newly introduced black color which made it a bestseller. Among the collection, there were boat shoes, canvas boat shoes, and leather deck shoes for men, women, and children. The shoes started with the numbers as styles not names. Number 3. For Skaters Around the 1970s, skateboarders and BMX riders developed an interest in colorful van shoes. As a result, leather was introduced, and was used on the toe and heel, mainly for these skateboarders, who easily wore these shoes out. Around 1975, custom-made skateboarder shoes were being made, with padded backs, outside heel counter, a padded collar, various color combinations, and special labels, with the most significant part being the sides, which protected skaters from accidents. According to van Vans Australia, skateboarders who liked Vans, rugged makeup, and sticky soul were seen sporting Vans all over Southern California in the early 1970s. By the way, a lot of hard work and care goes into these videos, so if you could help us out by clicking the subscribe button, we would greatly appreciate it. Number 4. New Styles Vans is a competitor among sports shoe companies. Over the years, styles were created for other sports such as baseball, skydiving, wrestling, and basketball. In 2004, Vans allowed its customers to custom design styles of slip-on vans online. The company also sponsors a Vans Skate Park, the Vans Warped Tour, a music and sports festival, and skate street contests. Vans are always the heart of these events. In recent years, fashion designers have designed their own Vans styles. Number 5. 
high fashion commodity. By 2012, Vans had made its way from a street necessity to high fashion commodity. Then Celine creative director Phoebe Philo began regularly wearing slip-ons and even debuted a Celine version made with python and pony skin, opening the high fashion floodgates for other brands from St. Laurent to Givenchy to produce similar homages. It was not only Philo at Celine that recognized the power of the slip-on. Her eventual successor, Heidi Sleemane, too, was a fan. So much so that his take on both the slip-on and authentic became collection staples during his celebrated tenure at St. Laurent Paris from 2012 to 2016. Today, with 90s and early 2000s skate style, a key reference point for most menswear collections, every brand from Mansion, Margiela, to Miheri Suhiro includes some sort of Vans homage, the latter's comically thick-soled authentic being one of the most hyped fashion sneakers in recent memory. Number 6. Celebs love Vans. If you feel like you've been seeing Vans a lot lately, it's probably because you have. Celebs love them. Rihanna has been spotted in them many times, and of course, she's worn some from her man ASAP Rocky's collab with the brand. Megan Fox, Kourtney Kardashian, Ariana Grande, and Emily Ratajkowski go for the old school Vans in white and black. Sophie Turner wears the old school Vans adorned with a flame design. Kim Kardashian and Olivia Rodrigo have black and white checkered shoes. Gwen Stefani was recently spotted in a red and white version of the same pair. They're not the only celebs who have shoes from the iconic brand. Bella Hadid, Kai Gerber, and Whitney Port are on board with Vans 2. Number 7. Channel 66 In 2021, Vans launched Channel 66, a live stream television network broadcasting around the globe with programs ranging from world music DJ sets to surfing and skate competitions, essentially a one-stop shop for all things that encompasses the Vans universe. This new endeavor is the company's effort to tackle a new forefront, independent media and streaming. With daily news coverage and live action sports broadcasts, it's the first venture of its kind, and while off to a rocky start, streaming numbers are somewhat trivial still. The Direction feels promising. In fact, it's precisely this ability to maintain relevance that makes Vans feel so special. That was an especially juicy fact, right? I think that one definitely deserves a thumbs up. Number 8. Vans and Parks Project This dreamy California collection between Vans and Parks Project is contributing $250,000 to the National Parks Conservation Association in support of its mission. Shop the collection Vans, the original action sports footwear and apparel brand, and National Park Outfitters Park Project release a limited edition capsule collection inspired by the great outdoors. The collection includes staple Vans classic silhouettes embossed with Parks Project's mission statement to leave it better than you found it when exploring the national parks. In addition to the product collaboration, this collection will directly give back $250,000 to the National Parks Conservation Association. Number 9. Vans in the Movies Vans got an additional boost in 1980 when Universal Studios called to ask for sneakers for a movie it was producing, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. One of the young actors in the film, Sean Penn, had grown up surfing and skating in Santa Monica and told the producers that his character, the stone surfer Jeff Spicoli, needed to wear Vans for the film. The brand sent Universal a few pairs of sneakers, including a recently redesigned pair of the slip-ons, featuring a checkerboard design inspired by the patterns young skaters had been drawing on their white Vans for years. The film performed well at the box office, grossing over $27 million, six times its budget, and became a cult classic. In 1982, the year the film was released, Vans saw its revenue more than double to $45 million from $20 million the year before. Number 10. Off the Wall While sneakers were produced by Vans, skateboarding legends Alva and Peralta were the driving force behind their success. The pair were a core part of the legendary Zephyr competition team, aka Z-Boys, who were originally sponsored by Jeff Ho Surfboards and Zephyr Productions, a groundbreaking surf shop in Venice Beach, aka Dogtown. Not only did Alva and Peralta give Vans instant street cred, they also helped design the sneakers, providing instant inspiration for colorways and the infamous logo. As the story goes, Alva was skating in an empty pool and caught air while gripping his skateboard. Amazed, Z-Boy's co-founder Skip Engblom said, man, you just went off the wall. The off the wall phrase was quickly adopted by other skaters, eventually making its way into the Van's logo once the Van Doren brothers became aware of it. According to Paul's son, Steve Van Doren, who began working for Vans as a 10-year-old and is still with the company today, 
today, Alva also inspired the company's first two-tone shoes. Quote, actually, the reason the first two-tone shoes came out was because Tony Alva came in one time needed a left shoe and didn't care about the color, so ended up wearing one navy blue shoe and one red shoe. So, the first two-tone shoe we came out with was navy blue and red, he said to Vice in 2011. We appreciate you sticking around until the end of the video. We hope you enjoyed, but why stop now? Click these videos for more awesome content.